Hi everyone, this is a poetry book that I just love. It's called Flutter and Hum Animal Poems, and it's written and illustrated by Julie Pashkis. Um, I love looking at this poetry book, especially when kids are trying out writing their own poetry, because the author, Julie, has a note in the back um, that she did not consider herself a poet before. She's an illustrator, so she does art for her job. Um, and she doesn't usually write in books. She hadn't really written poetry before, but she got inspired and she made this book of poems. So I hope that some of the poems can, might inspire you. Um, they're all different animal poems. So each page features her artwork and features a poem about a certain animal. I'm going to go through and read them. Usually when we read poetry books in the classroom, we read a couple and then we stop and we read a couple another time. So you might want to do that here. You might pause and come back to it. But I decided since it's a pretty short book that I'm just going to go through and read each one. And I'll try to show you each illustration. Maybe the other ones I'll show you before. Also, you should know if you choose to check out this book sometime that each poem is written in English and in Spanish. Unfortunately, I am not a fluent Spanish speaker, so I'm not going to read the Spanish version of the poem today. Um, but I'm happy once we're all back in school together for anyone to check this out who wants to. And I think you can also find this book online at different bookstores. Snake. Slithering through the grass, the sinuous snake is writing a slippery poem with his body. But his alphabet is too simple. He only knows one letter. S turtle. The turtle hides in her shell, but maybe there is space, a place, for hidden treasure, just for pleasure. She could put an emerald and a ruby or two there. When she walks, she listens to the rattle of the gemstones. That is why she goes so slowly. She doesn't want to spill her secrets. Heron. See if you can make a movie of this one in your mind, especially if you know what herons look like. Maybe you've seen a heron um, out at a park or out in nature somewhere. See if you can picture this and then I'll show you. In the mirror of the lake are two herons with one leg. Splash! One heron, two legs. Okay, now see if this matches what you are picturing. So two herons, one leg, one heron, two legs. See if you can tell what happened to change that. Crow. On this gray day, on this gray street, the black crow caws. He hops, stops, and stares at a yellow umbrella the only sun shining today. Cow. Black cow, gold field, blue sky, big eye, buzzing fly, Low munch, all day lunch. One thing I like as I read this book is it feels like the poet uses kind of some different ideas and different styles and different poems. So you might be really inspired by one of them and then others might not speak to you as much, but maybe one of them will give you an idea and you'll be like, oh, I might write a poem like that. Or I might write a poem about that animal. Dog. The shaggy dog 
wiggles, wiggles, squirms, and leaps. His wagging tail fans wild happiness into the wide world. You might connect if you know a dog like that. I forgot to remind you about connection symbols earlier, but you might be doing some. I also don't know if you can hear my dog's sound effects in the background. He gets very concerned whenever kids on scooters ride by our house, which happens often right now. Anyways, he's been a little bit noisy in the background. Sorry about that. This next poem is called Parrot. It's okay to stare at the parrot. Go ahead. The parrot is like a flower that talks. Pick me, pick me. And then a beautiful illustration. Such bright colors. I keep talking about the poetry you might be inspired to do, but you might get some ideas of an art project you want to work on after this. Deer. The deer is shy when he says hi. One glance, see him fly goodbye. I chose to read that one a little faster. I started thinking about, about halfway through this book that, you know, some poems are meant to read slow, like the turtle, but a deer, I mean, they can move very quickly, especially when they're startled. This is called Whale. Fat and fantastic, I am the dancing whale. In a dazzle of bubbles, I dance with the enormous ocean. I think the movie in your mind of this might be even more interesting than the illustration. And the illustration is beautiful, but can you picture a whale dancing in a dazzle of bubbles? So cool. Owl. The moon is a lantern in the branches, a shimmer. A shadow whistles through the grass, a whisper. Out of the darkness, an owl hoots, an echo. The night train is leaving. Sorry, I can never tell if picture is all the way in the video or not. Moth. And I think this is the last one. Yeah. Oh, no. Sorry. One more after this. The moth bombards the light bulb looking for the moon. The firefly flutters by its own star. The moon doesn't notice the moth, the light bulb, or the firefly. So beautiful. Okay, the real last one. This one is called Fish. Your bed is like a small boat. Your dreams are the sea where the boat floats. I am a fish in a sea of dreams. I splash, swim, and swirl. And once in a while, I wake you up. Oh, I love the line in this poem. I am a fish in a sea of dreams. Isn't it beautiful? It's the really neat thing about poetry. You can try out putting words and phrases together that are kind of magical, that mean something in your imagination, that are maybe different than how you might talk just when you're chatting with someone. I am a fish swimming, or I'm a fish in the sea of dreams. <laughs> Lovely. All right, that is the end of Flutter and Hum, a book I highly recommend if you are looking for a good poetry book to check out. Um, but of course, now you can just watch this. Um, I hope that it gives you some inspiration if you end up writing an animal poem or another poem that's inspired by this or any poem. I hope you share it with me. All right, see you next time. Bye.